Let's sketch the graph of these exponential functions. This time I'm not using base 2, I'm doing e, which is around 2.718. But when I, if I get stuck, I need to plot points, I'm just going to cheat and say that's 2 or 3. I won't plot the point exactly, but I'll just, you know, just to help me. All right, but if you memorize what e to the 2x looks like, then you can, I'm sorry, if you memorized what y equals 2 to the x looks like, you can do this one. Okay, so let's just say this is a reference y equals 2 to the x. See, it's, you know, it's almost the same. I mean, what's my proof of that? Well, what you can do is you can, you know, you can use a graphing calculator or something to, if you don't believe, believe that this is true, but it's this a, no, what you could do is you could sketch y to the 2x and you could sketch y to the 3x. So if you do y to the 3x, it looks very similar. Sorry, did I say y? Yeah, y equals 3 to the x power. So you can use those as a reference. And e is between 2 and 3. The, the, the thing to notice is that they have the same horizontal asymptote and they have the same y-intercept. Okay, now what happens if we multiply um, e to the x by the number 5? Well, this is going to give us the y-intercept. You could call that the initial value. When x is 0, you get 5 times e to the 0, so you get 5. So that can be thought of as the initial value of this function. Everything is going to get multiplied by 5. I'm just going to draw the same graph and fill in these numbers. So that's 0, 5. You had before, referring to this picture up here, we have um, a horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Well, you multiply that by 5 also. 0 times 5 is 0. You know, say, say over, like, especially if you look at this one. Over here, you have 2 to the minus 3, which is 1 eighth. So you're getting something like that over here. You get e to the minus 3, which is around, you know, it's between 1 eighth, 1 over 27. It's a small number. You multiply the small number by 5, and it's still small. That's my point, is that, that in your original graph, over here you had small numbers, and you multiply by 5, it's real small. Especially if you go farther enough to the left. You can get something very small and then multiply by 5. still small. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do uh, C. Y equals E to the negative X. And let's add 2 to that. Okay. So what is this going to do? This is going to give us a shift up by 2. And what will that do? That will change the horizontal asymptote. Now what about this e to the negative x? Well, you can refer to 2 to the minus x. That is going to make it go down like this. And so you can plot points, put in especially 0. So just put in 0 and we get e to the negative 0 plus 2 makes 1 plus 2 which makes 3. So multiplying by 5 stretches the graph out and changes the, um, the y-intercept. Adding 2 does not, it, it, it shifts the graph up. So notice, see, when you multiply by 5, we still have the same horizontal asymptote. Here, adding 2 shifts this up. So the horizontal asymptote cha changes, and so does the, um, the intercept. These aren't to the same scale, which is maybe not so great, but... If you look at them next to each other, they're at different scales.